uh, gentlemen. Um, I told you it's going to be powerful, and it, and it has been a an amazing talk. Thank Clay. Thank you. I I, I believe you're the first uh, person that I've known that personally experienced this. I became aware of the situation uh, through the media in 2001. Had Clay, you and I had never met, so I didn't know your story. And until I watched the uh, the movie or the the, the oxygen special, I, I did not realize you're part of that. And so thank you for sharing. But I've actually been carrying around. If you guys can see this. Since April 20th, 2002, the headline story, the day that uh, this hit, staggering numbers revealed the scope of Courtney's crimes. You could see 72 medications affected, 4,200 patients affected, 98,000 individual prescriptions that were diluted that at least they know of. And Clay, you're right. It could be, these numbers could be tripled or quadrupled. You know, they, this is just what he confessed to. And uh, so I've been, I've been tracking this story for quite a while. And I really appreciate the fact that you brought to us, you know, hey, think of that image in your own mind that uh, comes to mind. And instantly I, I was reminded of, the, of, the, of a, a gentleman that uh, caused me great pain back in the late 90s. Uh, I'll never forget, it was on my birthday. Uh, a 90, over 90 different counts, $3 million lawsuit was dropped in my lap on my birthday. Uh, what a birthday present, huh? And of all the terrible things that I had done to this person, and uh, he was a former employee uh, that I had supervised with the Fellowship of Christian Athletes, and uh, I was a bad dude. And what in ultimately happened was that was the beginning of the end of my employment with FCA, and uh, it's a longer story we need to get into today, but tremendous pain uh, involved with, with what he had done and the damage he inflicted. And, and um, early on, Clay, I, I did what you said here. I, I, I decided to forgive, prayed for him, prayed for his uh, family, prayed for his situation. And the thing that ultimately occurred, and, and I see the evidence of this, uh, that situation could have either made me bitter or better. And uh, it may be better. It, uh, and it actually opened up some things uh, that actually are the genesis of this ministry that we experience today. TGIW and, and Character of the Council would have never, ever occurred if it hadn't been for that lawsuit. So I actually have thanked God for the lawsuit. Thank God for the situation that I found myself in. And, um, and what, what others meant for evil, God meant for good. So I, I've, I've experienced exactly what you talked about. And I have a feeling a lot of the guys on the call have, have done that as well. And they've seen how God, when you forgive something you, and release it, that uh, God can do something really unbelievable in our own hearts. So, so Clay, thank you for that reminder and that uh, message. I've got a question for you and, and a question maybe for the, the group in total. Um, and this is actually, I put it on the bottom. Uh, I don't think it's in the notes you guys have, but the guys that come tomorrow to TJW are going to see this question on their notes. And it says this, why is forgiveness the absolute best option you can choose? Why is it the best option you can choose? Clay, you got a reaction to that? And I'd love to hear if other guys have a response Absolutely. to that. Well. Uh, there's two things that come to my mind. First, you obey God. Mm. And there's always incredible lifetime benefits of obeying God. That's the first thing. Mm. The second of all is also powerful, but it seems selfish at first, but it influences so many people. It releases you. Yeah. It frees you to not only experience all that God promised, but then to offer it and extend it to other people. Obeying God is its own reward. But one of those comes because he, he frees you up. Mm. And man, that combination, I want to choose. I, I may not always choose that, but I want to choose that one every time. Forgiveness, the absolute best option you can choose. Well, I think of that verse and uh, I can't remember where it's at, but uh, we forgive because he first forgave us. And mm. I went through a divorce and. And I'm constantly reminded, and I chose to forgive, and it did free me up. It, the benefit is not for the person you forgive, 
the benefit is you're right, obeying God, but also for the benefit of freeing yourself up. Mm. And I've really appreciated that in my walk with the Lord. Yeah, you think you think you're doing it for them, but the one who ends up being the most blessed by it is yourself. I mean, it is. Amen. And, and uh, what a powerful picture! And you know, uh, Clay, when when you said that your mom was, her prayer focus became Courtney and his family. I mean, she literally she was already released. She was already free. Completely. I mean, she died in in such an enormous amount of joy and peace. I mean, and her body had completely just wasted away to nothing. But I'm telling you, she was the most joy-filled anticipator of God's presence I'd ever been around. Good. Any other thoughts, guys, on why forgiveness is the absolute best option you can choose? Right. It, it, um, uh... It, it counters that bitterness. Bitterness is a huge mountain, I think, uh, that can grow. And um, I, you know, I've not experienced anything like what uh, has been taught this morning, but uh, bitterness can creep in and I think uh, just fester. And uh, that's, that's a poor choice to, to hold on to that. We're living beneath our privilege right. to live free. Yeah. I think you just get exhausted carrying it with you. And there just comes a place where I'm tired of this. I got to let go of it because it's just wearing me out. Yeah. I have a question, if I can ask. Um, when the system goes bad, when it was set up, with all the good intentions and everything else, who do you forgive yourself or do you try to work with the system or exactly what? Uh, well, you, tell me what, what system are you talking about? I'm sorry. I'm not. I'm uh, not. My wife died of cancer, uh, uh, could have gone a different route. Uh, but she had a certain kind of a school insurance policy that only allowed for in area, regardless of the situation. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, we fought that for a long, long time. Uh, they have now changed it, but what, who do you forgive? Yourself? That's about the only person you can forgive. <coughs> Sometimes that face that comes to mind, the one that we affix blame to is ourself. And sometimes that's accurate and sometimes it's not accurate, but it's a very common experience. Um, and, and a part of forgiveness is forgiving ourself. Uh, if we've had any part um, at all, and most of us have some level of guilt uh, and accurate guilt uh, because we participated in something, you know? And so there has to be a, there has to be a process whereby God brings that to mind and our face is the face we blame. Mm. And we allow God to deal with that because he's, he's releasing us the moment we call his name. And sure. so he, he just sits ready to hand over the keys to joy and forgiveness and power and freedom. Hey, Clay, one of the things that, that you said and Lance has ties to your situation, I think, as well as is, is um, in some respects, some percentage, we have a, a percentage of whatever we're in the middle of. It might be one percent. It might be ninety nine percent. It may be somewhere in between, but we, we have some piece of that puzzle, even my situation, you know, I had to own, you know, what, it, what was I responsible for in the midst of this pain that now is suddenly in my lap. And, and there was, there was some percentage there. And so you've got to have not just the forgiveness for those that the others, but you have to also own, own what you're responsible for. I'm working with a guy right now. I mean, and, and there's a good chance he will be physically at TGIW tomorrow who is in the middle of a mess. 
And he, he reached out to me recently with just a confession of what happened. And guess what? He's going he's gonna to make it through this situation because he is owning the peace that he's responsible for. You know, he could easily play the victim role. And, you know, be the victim and it's everybody else's problem. And, I, you know, this is, you know, I didn't sign up for this. And he could he could go down that trail real easily. But he he recognizes there's a piece of this puzzle that he is he has to own. And guess what, guys, because he is willing to take a hard look, hard inventory, look at himself. He's got a chance to be really free. He's got Mm -hmm. a really chance to, to experience joy. Because if he did not own whatever that percentage was, guys, it would ne- he would never, ever, ever experience the full freedom we're talking about today. So, so guys, as you think about whatever you're in the middle of and the system, the, the person, think about, okay, God, what, what is my part of that? And I need to be very vigorous and not just extending forgiveness to them, but also to me as well. Absolutely. We love playing the percentage game, don't we? Oh, yeah. Well, I was only 10% responsible, but he was 90%. Or uh, he was 60 and I was only 40. You know, we love playing the percentage game. And the truth is what you said, 1% or 100%, we we usually have some level of responsibility <clears throat> on our hands. Yeah. That's good. Other thoughts, guys? 2% of rat poison kills the rat. (laughs) Yes, it does, Bobby Bell. Forgiveness is an acquired taste. Mm. Mm. Yes, it is. It it does get a little easier. But uh, um, I heard a pastor one time say, uh, forgiveness is the environment of God. Mm. And mm. so to walk in that, um, not just the big things to forgive, but those little daily annoyances, especially with our spouse, because um, we, we tend to want to say things. And that's a, a form of unforgiveness when we say things. You're right. And so it's always good to stand there or sit down inside and, and just you know, family members. Um, I heard a, a a woman say one time we were having Thanksgiving <laughs> with friends, and I and she said, "Why have Thanksgiving or why, why have holidays with family when you can spend it with friends?" Mm-hmm. And so I thought about that. That there's there's an element of unforgiveness in that when we can't overlook those things in our families. Um, on a constant basis, and um, God continues to forgive us, um, sin after sin after sin, and so anyway, it's an environment, and I think it was Lance talked about the system, God's system, it, it's systemic forgiveness yes. in, his, in his system. So. Yeah, man, Cecil, you nailed it, buddy. I want to tell you something, I meant to tell you this last week. Um, I want to fly fish with you because I want to go after that brown trout. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm going fly fishing for redfish this weekend. So I'm going down off the coast of Louisiana and uh, my wife's going to get a few days of peace. And uh, so, anyway. so you're doing this for her. <laughs> I am. It's, it's actually for her. You you're selfless, her. buddy. You're so <laughs> <laughs> Rod, thank you so much. Um, I've never really told the enormity of this story in public ever. Mm. And I really, um, I was convicted that um, last February when that uh, Oxygen Channel producer came to Kansas City and um, I told him that story, I, I actually was convicted that it's probably time in my life that I tell an ongoing story of forgiveness from me. And uh, I didn't really know where it would come from. Um, But uh, this week I'm going to get to say, uh, to tell it three times Mm. today, tomorrow and Sunday. So Mm. I'm, I'm pretty excited about that. Uh, God is so good to, 
to just honor, you know, his work. This is his story. It's, it's not my story. It's his story because he's the one who initiated it. And he's the one who gives the power to do it. Hey, Clay, I'm curious, uh, did the story emerge because of the, the request that Courtney had made to be released from prison early? I mean, is this really, was that all tie into this or, no, or did uh, this story really emerged before that all happened? Well, uh, actually, I, I don't even have a clue. This producer somehow got my name and my phone number, I guess, from record. I don't know. I, we still don't know how he got, and he didn't know how he got our number. Um, there was just a list of families from Kansas City, and he just started calling, and some turned it down, and some, as you watched, some were so angry and bitter 19 years later. Um, and I realized revenge and anger sells. I get that. I get it. Um, I wish that they had included more of what I shared with them about this story of forgiveness, because I gave them a whole bunch. And uh, I will tell you this. A little. <laughs> yeah, I got just a touch at the end. But as I was sharing it, Lori, uh, my wife was in the control room, and she was watching a monitor. And the producer sat to the side of the camera, just asking me questions. And when I shared that about forgiveness, and shared that whole story that I shared with you. He had tears pouring down his face. And when we he turned off the camera, he said, Clay, I've never heard anything like this ever. Mm. It was so powerful. So I was, of course, I was disappointed. So disappointed that that's how little they showed on the show. But I realized revenge and anger sell. So, I mean, I didn't expect much more. Well, praise God, they had that little segment. It was about 15 seconds was the, was the forget. And it was as good as it gets guys in terms of, you know, the practical piece of this and what, uh, what, what's there. And Clay, it's interesting, you know, you were one of four or five different families that they featured and you saw the hate and the, and the rage and the, and the continued bitterness in their faces. And you didn't see that in your face at all. No. And that well, was what was so there. striking. It was so striking. So thank you. Uh, guys, uh, any, any specific takeaways that you have from today? Any, any specific things that, um, you know, that, uh, and again, not, not, not to dive into your in individual stories, but you know, what's something that you can take away? I mean, I'm hearing, and, and Jerry, thank you for your input. I'm hearing, you know, don't allow bitterness to get involved because bitterness guys, man, you talk about, not getting freedom, bitterness, just absolutely just, uh, it, 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 it'll, it'll, it'll send you down a bad trail guys, a bad trail. So any, any takeaways that you have today that, um, that could bless us, you know, as you think about the practical way and the practical need to, to be a forgiver and to receive the forgiveness of God as well. I shared, um, this is Dave Ellingsworth. I, I shared in uh, the chat that I recommend listening to the song Forgiveness by Matthew West. Mm. I've actually used that been praying with and worked with, um, including my mother-in-law, um, that she was been hurt. She was hurt so badly by her brother um, that um, she had unforgiveness. And, and one of the keys to the whole thing is uh, at the very end, it says, the prisoner that you free is you mm. right? because a lot of times in forgiveness, people don't even know that you're upset with them. I mean, they have no clue. That's right. You know, I mean, they've, they've, you know, mistreated you and they've moved on. And then you got this thing that's got you in prison because you're unwilling to let it go. Mm. You know, uh, so, you know, I definitely recommend that song. And, and then I also want to share a thought that there is no better way to shine your light as a Christian than to forgive somebody that doesn't deserve it. That's right. Talk about turning the other cheek. Hmm. That's what it is. But I mean, 
you know, the word talks to us all the time about, uh, you know, the peace that you can't understand. And boy, is forgiveness one of those. I mean, the minute you do it, you, you get a peace that is just uncomprehensible. I mean, you're just like, man, why did I hang on to this for so long? I could have been freed, you know, months, years, weeks ago. Because it's instantaneous. Yeah. yeah. So I just want to share that. Thanks, Clay, for your message, brother. Man, it is a privilege in my life. I promise you. As, as Clay was talking, I was thinking about the spiritual warfare kind of that's involved in this. Mm. Uh, and as uh, Dave, I think, was saying, you know, when when we're offended, it doesn't have to re be a real big, terrible thing. And like he said, sometimes the other person's offended us. They don't even know that they offended us. That's right. So the spiritual warfare thing jumps in and Satan throws fuel all over that fire that's burning inside of us. And until we really realize that we have this spirit in us that can combat that. And as Galatians says, to walk by that spirit. And we don't have to deal with all this stuff if we have that spirit inside helping us in the unforgiveness uh, that we that we don't express. So uh, it's Satan's involved. There's no doubt about it in my mind. No. And he finds me willing a lot. <laughs> he doesn't get all the credit. Any other takeaways, guys, that you have uh, this morning? Any other last thoughts for Clay or for the group? Powerful, powerful stuff here, guys. Really practical. Hey, Rod, this is Scott. Hey, um, Clay, thanks for your, your transparency. It was uh, very powerful. Um, Rod, back in, it was about 2003, uh, one of your, one of the talks you gave was on, uh, actually, this topic it was uh, on bitterness, actually, how that can, you know, uh, if we allow it to fester, again, it, it affects everything that we do. And so I remember very much what your, kind of clay what you were talking about today who was that person that comes to mind and uh at that time it was my mom that uh i had continued to kind of harbor bitterness towards her from my childhood things that um they weren't extremely severe but i mean enough to where uh there was definitely a, a a strain in our relationship and it was more on my part so anyway long story short i i um had had breakfast with her i called her up and said hey i need to uh, talk with you. And, and, and after that, right after, after your talk and actually um, the church I was going at, at the time, the pastor had, had, had preached on a talk almost identical on forgiveness. Um, but there was a moment in my life where I sat down with my mom and, and she had no idea that I, I harbored those feelings towards her. But the point was after that meeting, it, it freed me up. I mean, so the whole point was I was that prisoner, so to speak, in my relationship with her. It's so it's changed um, ever since that time. So walking out of that that time and it, it opened up uh, to some really fresh conversations between her and I. So uh, anyway, it that it it and it's one of those things to this day. I still Clay, like you said. I mean, when I see her all the time, I, I, there are still things that can come back to mind. I have to um, intentionally forgive that and. Uh, so that was powerful back back then. It, it was. It still is today, and it does free you up uh, when you when you're the one that uh, goes through that process. Hey, Scott, and think about the 17 years of if you had not done that, mm -hmm. what you would have missed out for the last 17 years. Mm -hmm. You know, just some 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 special times and special conversations would have never occurred if you would have kind of continued to lug that around. Sure. And allow that. I mean, th imagine how heavy that weight would be today yep. after carrying it. So praise God, you, 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 you reacted, you were proactive, you engaged. Those are, those are difficult conversations, but valuable conversations to have. So, so thank you yep. for, um, you know, doing that and responding because yep. a lot of people, I'm just going to sit on this one, or I'm just going to, you know, I'll wait for the per perfect, guess what? The perfect opportunity may not come. <laughs> so you got to just engage, Get, go for well, it. Yeah. Well, what's interesting is I look back, you know, that, that bitterness festers everything you do in your life. So yeah. your reaction to other people that, where did that come from? Why am I reacting that way? 
And that's, that was one of the sources of, of my behavior at that time. So being able to, you know, get that eradicated and, and released and, and experiencing God's forgiveness, truly living that out. It was, it was, it was big time freeing, big time. That's good. All right. Anybody else? Anybody else want to share? Mike, go for it. Mike Bailey, hit that mute. Hit the mute off. Mute. Mike Bailey, turn your mute off. There you go. Okay. Good morning. Thank you, Clay. It's a message that so many guys need to hear, particularly guys. I lived with that situation for decades. It was the father-son situation. And about a year after I became a Christian back in 2001, I forgave my father for what he did to me. And I saw a completely different person, not just in me, but in my father. Mm. And, and being able to see the other side of this darkness into the light is, is just unbelievable. Unless you've experienced this, and really internalized it, it's just words. As you said, Clay, you can say, I forgive you. Don't mean anything. Unless it comes from your, your heart and your spirit, it means nothing. But when you get there, yes, and I, I can't remember who said it, but that peace, that completely un, under, non-understandable peace, really is so beautiful and it's at that point when you can start to help others and until you've done that helping others is is just words so thank you what a what a blessing this morning to hear this story and so many of us have got testimonies it, it's by the the word of our testimony That's right that faith and helping others comes about. Bless you. Thank you. Mike, I want to tell you something. I wish I had your voice to tell my story. <laughs> we, we've all been given a great voice. <laughs> God, God hears our heart. We hear our voice, but right. God hears our heart. That's right. Thank you so much. Hey, Earl Williams, love you, buddy. Earl, thanks for joining us. Earl reached out to me yesterday and says, "Hey, I want the link. I want to get on." So, first time, first time attendee on our Zoom call. So, Clay, you brought you brought in Earl. Way to go, bud! <laughs> in fact, yeah, I, I, I'm sorry. Go, Carl. Go, go for it. Oh, I had something to say. I was uh, I was fortunate to to hear something similar to this. You know, when I was still at work, I'm retired now, but. Uh, I think this. I feel like this was really important to know this uh, when when you're working with working relationships because I mean you're you're kind of stuck in a situation where where somebody might do something to you and you're going to have to work with that person sometimes for thirty more years you know and if you don't learn to forgive them and if you you know you're just it, it could really be a miserable situation and you're not going to do as good for the company or work you know not that I'm all company or anything, but I mean, it, it's just, it really helped me out a lot because, uh, boy, to, to try to harbor, harbor that bitter, matter of fact, I, I knew a guy that everybody knew him because he just was always bitter. He wouldn't talk to people. He was just kind of huddled down in his own desk and uh, you try to come by. Matter of fact, when he retired, he said, I, I don't, I'm not, I don't want anybody to know when I'm retired because I don't want anybody to do anything for me. I just want to get out of here, you know? And so it's, you know, you know what I mean? Not a good way to live. Not a good way to live because, yeah, I, I hear you loud and clear on that. Hey, Rod, I want to just chime in. Clay, thank you for your sharing. That's quite a intimate story, man. It, I, it hits home, I'm sure, with all of us at all these various levels. My comment was um, um, as it pertains to the to the pharmacist, um, as I get a little older, I start to reflect and then you look at things uh, within people's lives. And it's like, how did he get to that point to make that decision 
mm. one time and then over and over and over and over again that turned out to as rod showed on that on that newspaper you know unknown amounts of 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 uh forgeries if you will uh and um I, instead of i'm learning to focus more on how they got there in order to do this in real time, mm. what happened to them previously. And then my heart pours out. It's like, you know, in order, you don't just start being a bad guy, just all of the sudden it sure. takes some time. It, it's you, there's one way to walk up rightly and then everything else is, is falling off. And it that's kind probably of, one tick at a time, you know? Yeah. And, and, and it's just amazing. Off way off. Yeah, it, it, there's only one way to walk uprightly, and uh, everything else is compromise. And uh, it's sad, but that's kind of where I try to identify how badly were they injured at some point in order to be able to move forward with some of this bad stuff, you know. Yeah. And Bob, he was a church goer. Uh, Rod, I'm sure you're about to pat. Uh, maybe touch on that because you've uh, you've used this illustration for 20 something years now um but uh yeah he was well connected even to the church um so you know that's uh, only the lord knows you know um you know this man's heart and uh what it may have been that set him on that path. Uh, I mean, all I know and all that you know is we live in a fallen world, all of us. Uh, even Paul said in Romans 7, the things I don't want to do, doggone, that's what I find myself doing. And the things I want to do, that's what I find myself not doing. I mean, Paul, you know, uh, had to traverse this as well. And that's not an excuse or anything. Uh, my point is, this is a guy who was well-connected and well thought of and well respected even uh, within uh, his local church body. And yet greed, um, whatever it may be, uh, it caused him to say, you know what, this th this will probably work. I My guess is he never had the intention that, that it would do the damage. Now, I don't know why that it would do the damage that it did. I, I don't know. I'm giving him the benefit of the doubt there uh, rather than make him out to be as absolutely evil, but he turned out to be, his decisions turned out to be, you know, just that. So the fact that, you know, Clay and, and several others, you know, have had to walk that, that journey. Um, that's amazing. And I will just say this. I, uh, I, I knew, Clay's mom and dad. Uh, I knew his mom more than uh, I did his dad. I just, I don't know why. I just uh, maybe because she was exactly what he said he was, uh, she was like, and more. Uh, <laughs> he, he could have expounded. I short sell it. I know. You did, man, because she was an amazing, an amazing woman. And, uh, um, and that's another reason why Clay and Mel are like they are uh, because of that example for sure don't blame my mom for that <laughs> <laughs> you know better you know better <laughs> you know better so uh man that was that was good to hear I, and i would just uh, if you guys that are still on here if you go in your chat some of you never even know you don't even know we have a chat if you go to the chat and you go to the very top of it you'll see that chris had put in how you can get to um to see this uh, oxygen episode. My, I, I don't even have it on my TV, but you can go to it on, um, uh, on your computer. Uh, the way I did it, I did it on my phone. I downloaded the NBC app. It was that simple. I downloaded the NBC app and then I searched License to Kill, which is the name of the series. It took me right to that. I just stuck in season two, episode six, and I watched the whole thing on my phone. Uh, so it's simple to get to. Uh, I'd encourage you to do it. I, if for nothing else, uh, the joy, the peace on Clay's face from the first time he's on camera, which 
Clay starts the show off. Really, I think Clay is the first thing on that show. It's there's a countenance there, guys. That uh, even for those that don't know the Lord, I I trust that God may use a show on oxygen and listen to a guy they don't know who he is or where he's from, but that might put something in their heart that gets them on a path where who knows i would not be a bit surprised if people come up to clay in heaven and say hey i know you and here's how i know you and thank you uh because god's just god and that's the way he works but i'd encourage you to uh to take some time and uh and watch that and uh, clay brother i love you you know that uh and uh He's going to he's going to share this Sunday because he's going to come back to our church where he was on staff with me at one time. And he's going to share it with our people this Sunday morning at First Baptist Blue Springs. So we look forward to having you there, brother. Thank you, Rod. Thank you, Greg. Thank you, guys. Thank you for just uh, allowing me the opportunity to tell God's story. You know, uh, one of the things I didn't realize that the show shared was the a mass amount of money that he had accumulated. It was $19 million that they know that he uh, profited. And one of the things I know from the article is part of the, the justification that he had was he gave over a million of that those dollars to his church. So, you know, he, he knew who the pastor was. Pastor knew him. I mean, he was well known. Well, uh, you know, that kind of money, especially in the year 2002, um, and that might have been part of the justification was, well, hey, I'm giving to the Lord's work. You know, I mean, the Lord's I'm I'm benefiting, but the Lord's also benefiting from this as well. And that's the tragic part. And one of the quotes that is pretty telling is he he can he made a confession to the judge and the jury and, and some of the victims. Clay, I don't know if you were sitting in the crowd that day when he said this, but he said, I have violated my love relationship with Jesus Christ. Yep. And so he knew, he knew that, that he had, you know, came to grips with, he had violated that love relationship with Christ for his own personal gain, uh, for, you know, and whatever justifications he had, he finally recognized that peace. And, and, um, his parole day guys is scheduled for 2027. He'll be, he'll be 75 years old. I don't know what'll happen that day. I don't know if they'll early release him because that would be 27, about 26, 27 years of his 30 year sentence. I don't know if he'll get that full 30 or not, but he's eligible in 2027. So. Hey, Rod, before we leave, I got two quick things I want to tell you. First of all, um, what the Lord did for me as I began to pray for him uh, through this process many years ago and even today, um, he's Robert Courtney lost everything. I mean, he lost his family. He lost his home, his job, his career, his church family. He lost everything. Every friend turned their back on him. He lost everything. And that really, really hurts me for him. But the second thing is what I thought was maybe one of the most powerful things, all that money that he gave to his church, his pastor, Lowell Northrup at Northland Cathedral gave every penny back to be used for the victim's civil fund. He gave every penny back. I'm not sure I know too many pastors who would have done that. They would have just remained silent. It cost that church great because they had major debt. They built this huge new facility. He gave every penny of that back. Mm. That really is, that's a huge testimony about Lowell and his servant leadership. Lowell Harrop. Yeah. Lowell Harrop, Northern Cathedral. And is Lowell still alive today? I, I don't know. They have a new, they have a different pastor now, right. um, you know, younger, cooler. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Well, that's, that's a, thank you for sharing that piece. Of the, I didn't realize that piece of the story as well. So that's good.